Oui, je remercie Rodrigo d'avoir accepté ce challenge de cette présentation très exhaustive du problème et j'invite la salle à s'exprimer en lui posant quelques questions. Just to break the ice. Okay, uh, of course I agree with all of this. So my question is more behind this, you know. The pr I was very glad to see that you mentioned that alt matrix may be a, it was a buzzword that has been sent on the market. It should be, it should disappear if we want to think seriously. Because using it is a kind of lens that deforms the real thing that we have to look at. What, and behind the word alt metrics are two things. There is the social fact Okay, that there are people who use tweets, who write things on blog. Okay, sociologically it can be studied. Okay, it's not a metric, it's a it's a, an analysis of the so, the social world which is transformed. When we talk about metrics, we take for granted that we're talking about evaluation, and you mention it of course clearly, but I think it's very important because if we were to have time to discuss this thing. The way Altmetrix has been constructed is upside down, which is an absurdity in terms of scientific evaluation. We never begin by having a number and asking what it means. When we evaluate, we say, okay, what do I want to evaluate? And as you said, a researcher is not only publishing papers, he's also having blogs, well, very few of them, but they are also teaching, okay? So the question is that, what do we want to evaluate and why do we want to evaluate this aspect? Maybe we could decide that we don't want to evaluate the fact that you have blogs. We, don't, we could say we don't care because you're paid to, for doing research. And if you're paid for doing research, you're paid to publish papers. We could decide that or not. It's not for us. The problem is that in all the discourse of altmetrics, it's taken for granted that we have to do that. Uh, I think we should step back and say, do we have to do that? Uh, there's a lot of discourse about metrics and indicators without the scientific analysis of what an indicator is. It must, a thermometer indicate temperature, not humidity. So if we don't know what those indicators indicate, good luck with evaluation. But I think we agree on this, but I wanted yeah, yeah. to explicit more, more explicitly that all this is about for because the, the research part, which is very good about the two maps, there we have a better data. And the last word I wanted to say, which is I think we have to recall it, those who, use, who think altmetrics is a kind of alternative to usual metrics like citation, they just misunderstood. Citation is just a measure of one kind of thing. It's not that it has, been, it has to be replaced. It does not have to be replaced. It measures what is measured. It's like the thermometer. The thermometer does not measure the humidity. The hygrometer measure humidity, so you need both apparatus to measure what you want to measure. And the difference between citations and that is that for 30 years there has been work in sociology of science before anyone in the 80s started to use citation as an evaluation tool that we understood a bit more because we have been studying it since the 70s and even 1965. So 40 years. With altmetrics, we're beginning now to see with the maps and the, uh, the scientific analysis what they mean. It's only after we know the properties of those behavior that we could see if and on what condition if they could become indicators. Yeah. Yeah, what can I say? <laughs> now, I, indeed, indeed. So the, 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 the whole pressure is on using all metrics as replacement of citations, replacement of peer review, a new thing for evaluation. Going to just put my last slide, because I had some last hope for, uh, for all metrics, not such a back pitch. And in a way, maybe the value of all metrics will be more for, for example, types of data mining. So finding things that so far we cannot find in citations. For example, something I was thinking, so librarians could, uh, new students in a, 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 in a university say, oh, if you're going to study chemistry or the discipline, look, these are the most important blogs discussing about scientific papers. Or these are the most important Twitter users that that you could follow. So that, that, that kind of things. Then of course we'll have the debate if they can capture or not social impact, popular impact, cultural impact. 
so we are still working on that. We may end up saying no, but we may also find some value, some, some interest for that. But I, I fully agree. I think, but it's also with bibliometrics. So, so the, the whole debate on the H index, the whole debate on the impact factor is about having one indicator to tell you everything. No, metrics are to inform things, to, to know how things are going. And sometimes you have to focus on some indicators, sometimes on others. And, well, that's, that's basically the, the main idea. Another hmm. question? Oui. Um, is it possible to speak in Spanish? <laughs> But I don't know if uh, <laughs> si, <laughs> si, <laughs> si prefiero porque soy más estoy más cómoda en español. La, la pregunta es, yo soy bibliotecaria en una universidad en Toulouse y yo temo que este sistema de, de medida um, llegue los um, los investigadores a utilizar cada vez más las redes sociales académicas de las cuales nosotros bibliotecarios tratamos de, de limitar un poco su, su utilización por cuestiones de, de baja perenización de los artículos. No, perenidad de la... ¿Cómo? Uh, el aspecto de, de conservación de conservación a largo plazo de los artículos que están uh, depositados en estas plataformas de redes sociales académicas. Preferimos que, que depositen sus artículos en plataformas públicas. Entonces, ¿este sistema puede incitarlos a utilizar más redes sociales académicas? Okay. Y eso es mi temor, un poco. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to translate. <laughs> Probably Google Translator. <laughs> type. So, uh, so basically you are saying that you have some concern uh, on, the, on the massive use of, of uh, these uh, social network tools, because then scientists may start to place their, their outputs, their scientific outputs in other uh, sites that don't have guarantees of, for example, conservation, like I would say libraries and repositories have. I would say, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good point. Uh, so, for example, Figshare is attracting a lot of uh, uh, yeah, data and presentations. Uh, well, I, I think they also look to that, to, to have some conservation policies. But uh, in a way, it's also not, not a contradiction because um, so many times re people retweet things that are in repositories, like university repositories or, or archive. And so it's not, it's not really uh, this or that. It's sometimes they go together. But uh, you're right, there may be some situations where there are risks. So for example, if people uh, only save uh, uh, their documents in, in ResearchGate. So ResearchGate is, is a private company, and we don't know what can happen to this, to this company in the future. So I, I, see, I see your concern. I, I, yeah. Another question. Uh, sinon, j'avais une question avant de céder la parole à Eugène Gras. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, wasn't initially uh, at Metrics, um, I should say, a trivial advertising tool for plus one uh, to be just a bit more red, and uh, what is presently the real proportion of uh, using alt metrics by uh, which percentage by plus one, considering the rest of uh, the literature, scientific literature? Um, well, first of all, the, the, the term alt metrics was proposed by by Jason Prim, mm -hmm. not 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 by Plus. Yeah. Well, Plus, of course, that was collecting downloads, views, and all these uh, all these things. Uh, I don't really know how uh, many people are using those metrics. That's something we should ask uh, mm -hmm. someone from Plus. What I know is that uh, Plus is a, so a data source that has been used a lot for metric research. Mm -hmm. So the data provided by them, because it's so rich, uh, is uh, yeah, has been heavily used in in metric research. Maybe. With the limitation that, I mean, PLOS is, is a journal is, uh, yeah, with a lot of papers, but then you have the rest of the world. 
And then many times you don't find the same, for example, types of correlations that you find in PLOS than when you go to, for example, other fields, other, other journals, or other publications. But the concrete question, who is using it, or how, much, how many people are using it, I, I don't know, honestly. No, it's not a coincidence if uh, PLOS is uh, mainly biomedical uh, oriented. Yeah. And, uh, Still the same, I should say. So thank you very much indeed. If there's no any other question, thank you. Really.